We are really excited to have all four of our TDOT regional directors here and are excited for them to share a bit about themselves and the TDOT staff that they lead across the state. The, these leaders are a wealth of knowledge about projects and issues in our district. I probably, my math probably won't go, go can count that high to how many years collectively they've served TDOT, but um, um, their, their knowledge is just invaluable. But I do ask from the committee that if you, um, let's not ask um, project specific questions, that's better to direct one-on-one -on -one with the, the regional directors and they're happy to stay after uh, to address a specific project, but uh, just, um, 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 we just kind of want to talk more in general terms or overall the region and things like that. So you can be getting your questions together um, you know, we have Region 1, Steve Borden, Region 2, Danny Oliver, Region 3, Jay Norris, and Region 4, Jason Baker. And so I believe, Commissioner, you are recognized. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll kick it off. Thank you, Chair Massey. Members, members of the committee, you'll be glad to know that uh, you don't have to listen to me today because uh, I'm not, I am not presenting, uh, but I, I want to come here um, to sit at the table uh, with this group of people because uh, these uh, these are our leaders in the regions that uh, you work with and that serve your districts every day and uh, they do they do a magnificent job and are uh, I think we've got the most dedicated leadership in in an entire department in the country and so I'm very very proud of these guys and uh, all of our people. And I'm going to turn it over to Will to uh, kind of set this up and introduce them. Will, our chief engineer. Uh, thank you again, Will Reed, chief engineer. Thank you, chair lady and committee for this opportunity. Just to kind of set the stage for you, I know you all know uh, many of these gentlemen that are up here, but I just wanted to say, um, let you know how much I personally appreciate all of them. They're all uh, assistants of mine and just they they six to seven hundred employees in each region that that report up to these gentlemen that are here they truly are uh, not only are they public servants but these gentlemen and their staff represent the backbone of what tdot does uh every day so i just appreciate the opportunity to bring them before you as i'm obviously pretty proud of them and look forward to you being able to ask them any questions you may have about about what we do on a daily basis or otherwise. So, Chair Lady, Committee, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I guess we're going to go one, two, three, four, start with the best. No. Yeah. yeah. I'm a little partial. I'm a little partial. So, um, Steve Borden, and I, I'm going to do something just a little different. We do have a little fun fact about each of you. Uh, no telling what I'm coming out with, but. Uh, um, Steve um, um, likes pizza. Sorry, we didn't have any pizza here today. And uh, I've heard he's a, a pretty good break dancer. Oh my and, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and but but he also is a second generation T dot employee. His dad worked with T dot, and his wealth of knowledge is is extensive. And he always uh, answers my calls with a smile. And um, he's also a constituent too, so that's even better. But um, Steve, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair Lady, and and for the committee, it's an honor to be here. I really appreciate that. Uh, I guess they want us to tell us a little bit about ourselves, and uh, uh, yeah, she has. And uh, the break dancing thing, somebody's in trouble at the office, <laughs> and I'm not going to do any break dancing today. So, um, but uh, for me, uh, uh, you know. The department, as you noted, is, is a way of life for me. My dad was here for 44 years. I've been blessed to be a part of the TDOT family, and when I say that, it's a family. Uh, the people that I work with, the 649 people that I have today are more than just employees, but they're people that we do life with. And uh, been blessed to be here for 33 years uh, with the department. I interned three summers uh, before that. Uh, and uh, held various roles, but have been in the position that I'm in now for about 14 years, uh, almost 15. Um, and uh, I'm an East Tennessee native, uh, married to a, a lady that I went to school with and met her in first grade. 
and uh, have two children. And, uh, and the best thing I have now is I have a grandchild. It is amazing. If you all need pictures afterwards, I'll be glad to show you. But uh, <clears throat> uh, with that, I mean, I'm very blessed to be able to work in the East Tennessee area. Each of us here, we, you know, these are our homes that we serve in and the people that we get a chance to work alongside and, and, and with you folks as well, uh, serving the same people. You know, at the end of the day, uh, for me, you know, I'm an engineer by trade, right? I love projects. I love all those things. But at the end of the day, we're in the people business. And, uh, and, and that's what both of us are in, is to be able to serve those folks. And, uh, you know, whether it, for that seven, you know, 1,700 lane miles of interstate, uh, you know, 7,700 lane miles of, of state routes, the 4,400 bridges that all connect communities, to, to be able to be there and, and be a part of uh, an organization and be, that touches everybody. You know, I get to go to communities, I get to see what's going on and see how we can help. And I, I think that's a big part of what we do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Next we have Region 2, Danny Oliver. Let's see what I have about you. Um, uh, he, you, you were a former professor at the University of Tennessee, I believe, yes. and, and, uh, which is my alma mater. Uh, it's Frank's alma mater, too. He doesn't always claim it, but uh, um, <laughs> Senator Nicely and, and Senator Powers. And so... Um, and I believe congratulations are in order. You have a new grandchild. Yes. So. Thank you very much. You're recognized. No. Now, now it's on. Okay. And I think Steve read all that interlude that he gave. It was, he was reading off my screen. So I, I kind of took a lot of what I was, what I was going to say. But, uh, again, it is an honor. Uh, appreciate this uh, to be able to sit and, and share a little bit about ourselves and our regions with everybody today. Um, I've been a part of the department um, going on a little over 17 years, um, most recently in this role, eight months. So uh, as you said, I, was, uh, I did serve as a, as a quote-unquote professor for the University of Tennessee. Uh, students use that term, I think, to impress. Uh, it was a more, more of a teacher lecturer, but um, I'll take it. I'll take it. And then that started back in 2018. Previously, I worked for Steve Borden in Region 1 as a director of project development. And I may have been able to work with, with some of you. Uh, Senator Nice, I remember you know, working with, with you as well. What did you teach? I taught um, a number of courses in the civil engineering curriculum. Uh, for a, a, the most, it was uh, land surveying, which I called geomatics. Yeah. But um, that was in 18, so I stepped away for a few years and um, was given an opportunity to come back and, and, and work at the department. And, uh, Something I you know, hold very, very highly, my, my wife, when I was asked for the interest, if I even had interest in coming to uh, work for TDOT, you know, word of wisdom, uh, listen to your wives. And uh, she, she told me, said, you know, of all the jobs you've had, uh, the one you've been most proud of and you just continually talk about is your work you did at TDOT. And uh, that's, that's something very special. Steve talked about family, and that's, that's something near and dear, and that's a Nobody made me come back to TDOT. I'm, uh, I came back on my own will because I want to be a part of it. You know, Region 2 is, is uh, you know, we have portions of, of Middle Tennessee, Upper Cumberland Plateau, um, and East Tennessee. So the things we talked about in Region 1 that made our projects so challenging with topography, we have a lot of that as, as well in Region 2 and across the state of Tennessee as well. Um, 3,200 bridges, uh, 70, 700 uh, lane miles of interstate and, and state routes, 67 of hundred of those are, are state routes, uh, much like Region 1, uh, which I, I don't know if it's Commissioner Will said, uh, six to seven hundred employees, we're 574. So um, uh, just proud to be a part of the team and thankful for what uh, opportunity I've been given to, to serve as a Region 2 director. Thank you. Um, Region 3, Jay Norris. He's looking at me scaredly, but uh, uh, also a second generation TDOT employee. Yes, ma'am and uh, has worked about every job at TDOT. Did you do trash removal or something uh, like that? Along the way, I've, I've removed a lot of trash. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> Still <laughs> doing that. I, I'm, I'm not gonna, and, and but I, I heard you've got a son that wrestles who really would like to go to the University of Tennessee? Yes, yes ma'am. We um, I have a senior that uh, wrestles at Franklin High School and um, he just uh, won a tournament a couple weeks ago. I'm uh, proud of him. I know you're real proud of him. Even if he doesn't go to Vandy, we'd like him at UT. Yeah. So, so 
I'll take care of him when it comes to Knoxville. Yes, ma'am. You're recognized. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair Lady. So I'm Jay Norris. I'm the Region 3 Director. That is Middle Tennessee. So um, the 26 counties in Middle Tennessee, we have around 11,400 lane miles and 72 bridges around, I think we're at right under 700 staff in those areas. And um, I, want, I want to echo what Steve said is that um, we, we do engineering and operations jobs and um, buy property and design roads, but we're, we're in the people business. And um, I, I just want y'all to know that I, I have the pleasure of working and serving this team and I can't say enough good things about them. It's their, their heart to serve is very big. They always rise to the occasion. Um, if you look at our most recent winter weather event, we had people that came in on Sunday at six o'clock, went home Friday evening, and um, and really stepped up and took care of Tennessee. I, I can't say enough good things and how proud of them I am. So, as you mentioned, Chair Lady, I'm I'm a second generation TDOT employee. My father spent a career at the department. Um, I grew up with a state car in the driveway and would. Um, in the evenings get on the CB and try to talk to people and <laughs> and um, it, I guess it's in our blood and um, you know I, the thing I guess I could practice civil engineering anywhere and the thing that I love is we get to serve is we get to touch every citizen in Middle Tennessee every day and make their lives better and make sure they're thriving and um, I'm a sixth generation Tennessean um, I love this place um, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of Tennessee and the work and what it's going to be, what it is and what it's going to be. Um, so glad to serve. It's a pleasure to be before y'all today. And if I, I may have missed it. How long have you been with TDOT? I'm sorry, ma'am. I've been 23 years. And in the current row? Uh, 15 months. 15 so months. Okay. I, was, I, I spent a um, short stint as the director of aeronautics before that and worked in the highway business in okay. a few other capacities. Okay, that. great. Yes, Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Region 4, Jason Baker. Um, couldn't find a whole lot about him, but I want to thank you that you're a deputy, uh, you're a reserve deputy officer with Sheriff's Office. Obviously, that's something that's very important to all of us, but especially this committee, because safety falls under this committee. Uh, and you like kayaks. We have a little lifetime company in my district that makes kayaks. So if you ever want to come tour the factory, you just let me know. We'll, we'll work it out. So you're Thank recognized. You. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, pleasure being here, as I said. Um, I do like kayaks. As a matter of fact, I believe I have a lifetime kayak, so that works out good. Uh, I'm the Region 4 director. Uh, Region 4 is the 21 counties of West Tennessee, bordered by Mississippi River and Tennessee River. Uh, we uh, have roughly a little over 10,000 lane miles that we manage, and we're heavy on the bridges. We're wet in West Tennessee, so we've got a little over 6,000 bridges that we maintain. Um, Employees, we're likewise with the uh, Region 1 and 3, we're a little over 650 employees. Same way as far as I've been with the department for 25 years. Uh, as I've come up, I've been through several different areas. I was in roadway design, environmental, uh, spent time in project management, director of operations, and then I've been in this role for uh, almost nine years. Uh, love love what I do. I uh, had a recent conversation with somebody as far as my job and I, I never dread getting up and coming to work. Uh, it's a, it's uh, an honor and a privilege to be able to, and, and as, as others have mentioned, to serve in a role that touches every Tennessean on a daily basis, uh, basis is just, um, it, it, it's uh, n not lost on me what that means and I, I do appreciate the role. Uh, with the region, I'll say just some, I guess, a little differences in Region 4. We've got some unique things as far as we go everywhere from a very densely populated Shelby County as far as uh, population. And then beyond that, we're largely rural and agricultural. Uh, so we've kind of got the spectrum that we deal with in Region 4. Uh, it pre uh, presents some unique opportunities uh, or challenges, depending on how you want to look at it. But again, thank you for the, the opportunity to be here and uh, appreciate it. Thank you, and if my math is good, you're almost collectively at 100 years. You're at 98 years experience with TDOT together. Uh, I think as regional directors, we're right at about 25 years. So that, that makes a difference when it comes to solving road issues, seeing the growth, knowing that how we've got to be a little more proactive. 
But since we are talking about longevity, we do have one employee in Region 1 that actually we, I think we figured out is the longest serving state employee, not just TDOT employee, but state employee, Harold Midas. And I think he was first started there, was it about 61, somewhere early, when, when JFK was president. Um, and just a dear, dear man and knows, knows where all the bones are buried in, in Region 1, basically. So uh, we appreciate people's dedication and, and service. Um, members, one, well, one thing, um, be thinking, and, and we may let somebody else hand, and ask some questions, but what's your most favorite project you've ever worked on? Um, but I think Senator Pody has a question too. I, I, I do, and this is kind of a unique opportunity that we get you all in here to be looking from one to the other. I am curious um, across the state, the difference between building a road in Region 1 in, in, in mountains and so forth compared to where it's wetlands, is there a cost difference in building and is there a cost difference in maintaining per, per mile, you know, and what, what's the challenges in each region that way? Uh, uh, so I will say yes, there are differences. Each and time, because li, excuse me, because we have a large viewing audience, um, we need you to soon when you talk identify yourself again in your title, please. Thank you. I'm we sorry. want our ratings to be good. I understand. Sorry, <laughs> uh, Jason Baker, uh, Region Four Director. Uh, absolutely, uh, there are differences, like you said, as far as with West Tennessee. Once you cross the Tennessee River, the we don't have rock in the ground. If, if, if you feel on rock, it probably came from a truck somewhere. Uh, we're largely sand, silt, and clay. Uh, and that proposes some challenges sometimes when it comes to the base that we build on, the structural integrity. I think that plays into a part sometimes of how long our asphalt roadways last, things like that. Um, even differences when we build piling for structures, our piling doesn't drive to where it hits rock we actually drive concrete piling until it gets enough friction around the pile that it actually supports the structure. So it's not good, not bad, it's just differences across the state. Uh, yeah, Steve Borden, Region 1, and I will say I'm the extreme opposite of Jason. Uh, I was blessed to spend a lot of time in, in Jason's area because my son went to UT Martin for his first stint in school for four years and graduated there. So I covered his wide roads with shoulders. Uh, <laughs> they're really nice. Uh, obviously in East Tennessee, and, and we all we all have uh, geotechnical and uh, challenges and, and for us and, and uh, Region 2 are real similar in that we have a lot of mountains, a lot of hills. You typically have a hill or a mountain on one side and a creek on the other and you're threading the needle between for a roadway. Uh, our biggest risk a lot of times is uh, longevity of roadways with slides. It tends to be really expensive because you're, you know, you're building in that terrain, so the excavation works hard. The crossings tend to be very difficult. And when you speak to longevity, it, a lot of it stems around those large fill sections and the, the vulnerability of the system over time as it, as it ages. Uh, so those are uh, quite a bit different. Uh, uh, we all have challenges, though. Each of them are, are, are unique on each end of the state, and I won't say they're easier or harder, but they are different uh, in what you have to deal with. And so I don't know if there's a big comparison, but is there a cost difference between building? It's different mm -hmm. type of building, but per mile, is it different? Well, I don't know if that's... Yes. So there, there, are some, there are some differences, as these gentlemen have pointed out, but um, you know, a lot of it uh, goes back to the materials. Um, the materials that are available, the native materials that are available to build things. So there is there is some variation there, but another thing that, that JB brought up, uh, Jason Baker, sorry, and I should have said Will Reed, Chief Engineer. Um, uh, when it comes to structures, particularly, um, Region 4, uh, which is West Tennessee, typically structures can, uh, the foundation improvement of a structure can run more than, than it does in Middle and, and East Tennessee, simply because, as he mentioned, in some cases, we drive piling 300 feet into the ground to get to get uh, bear, wow. to get refusal or or friction enough friction to hold that structure up. Not only that, West Tennessee is a large part of it is in a seismic zone, so that that there are there are uh, challenges that come along with that that can drive cost up. So, um, but you know, at the same time, I think that the thing that that is best for us when it comes to controlling cost is competition. 
um, and that's something that we, we focus on across the state. That's, the, that's one of the biggest drivers of cost versus material. And, and we also control that cost by the research and the, the technical decisions that we make. So for instance, we don't necessarily do the same mix design for asphalt in West Tennessee that we do in East Tennessee always. So we work, we work to find ways to make the, the pricing competitive and as uniform as we can across the board, but there are some inherent differences. Per mile, which one's more expensive or cheaper to, to either build or maintain? Um, well, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm average, not, yeah. uh, every, every facility is different. I, okay. I, ver I shy away from giving a per mile cost center, frankly, because um, depending on the type of facility, it can vary greatly. I will say this, um, when it comes to the grades associated with building a road or, you know, the horizontal and vertical elevation difference, heck of a lot easier to build in JB's area than it is in Steve's. But just so you know, I was hoping you were going to say it costs more for Region 2. That's why we need more money, you know. <laughs> okay, Senator Taylor. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I wanted to address the homeless encampments. That, that continues to be a challenge down in Memphis. And um, I want to publicly um, thank Jay Klein because he, he – um, he worked long and hard last year when we were trying to get a, a fairly large homeless encampment cleared. And uh, the result of that was very good. We, we, you know, the partners that were involved with that, obviously TDOT, the uh, Memphis Police Department, and the biggest partner uh, was Hospitality Hub. Um, because once the uh, homeless were removed, they were taken to, um, to Hospitality Hub where they were given uh, better living conditions there and the assistance that they needed because you know one of the things I've told because that people were critical of me for for having the homeless encampments removed but w whatever services and needs that homeless people um, need they're not going to be found under a bridge on the interstate the best thing we could do for the homeless folks is to get them someplace where they can get the help that they need and one of the success stories out of that latest uh, homeless encampment that we moved, there was a homeless veteran who was living there and he was able to be reunited with his family in West Virginia. It's those type of stories, success stories, uh, that we're able to do when we uh, know there's a collection or an encampment of homeless people that we can try to get them the help that they need and in some cases reunite them with their family. Um, so, but the Cleaning up the homeless encampments are a journey, not a destination. Uh, I mean, I've already talked to Jay. The homeless encampment that was cleared uh, last year has already come back, and it's going to be a continual um, uh, cycle of removing the homeless encampments, getting the folks the help that they need, and then more homeless encampments crop back up. So I guess my question to you is, uh, whomever um, can answer, is, is there an established process so that when the city of Memphis reaches out and says there's a homeless encampment at a certain interstate, that the ball gets rolling then and we're not reinventing the wheel each time we have this? And if I could just share one quick story before you answer. I used to battle this when I had my funeral homes. Uh, I used to tell them when a family walks in that we didn't know had a death and they come in to make funeral arrangements, don't act like it's the first time you've ever seen a family walk in the door and be like, oh, did you have an appointment? Um, when did the death occur? Uh, are you all the family? Just take them to a room and at least act like we do this every day. And uh, so we try to make sure we had a process built so when they are confronted with something, they know how to, how to act and, and get the process started. So with that, if you could tell me if we have such a process. Absolutely. Uh, Jason Baker, Region 4 Director. Uh, thank you for your question, Senator. And, and you're right. We do have a process in Memphis and the three partners that you mentioned, it is a joint effort, you know, physically actually removing people if it gets to that point, MPD. Hub is a big part of that as far as, like you said, trying to give the assistance first to see if we can find a location for them. And then TDOT comes in a joint with Hub on the cleanup side. So while we do have a process, we're actually working right now 
to help streamline some of that process between us and hub we're looking to something contractually to make it to where because we know it's as you stated a reoccurring problem so that we're not having to do each time kind of individually but we're looking to do it to where it's seamless to where as we need that assistance we've got a process to do so we're working with uh, some of our headquarters divisions to make that a more streamlined process uh, but but you're right it's a it's an ongoing thing and I think we are working well to have something established to where when these do pop up we can address them um, thank you madam chairman um, the uh, and I think to the the success stories that come out of that uh, I think are important to tell as well uh, where people are people and families are able to get the services and help that they need and people reunited with their families because then that makes it easier for the next homeless encampment uh, where there's less resistance because as we dealt with the first one the everyone was afraid of the optics the Memphis Police Department did not want to be seen on, on some cell phone video uh, removing homeless folks TDOT uh, is not I mean y'all aren't equipped to physically remove people from the interstate and so it really took a partnership and a joint effort and once everybody got on the same page and figured out how to do it with dignity and, and provided dignity to the folks that were living in the homeless encampments it really was a success story so I, I really want to thank you for doing that and, and let's develop a process so that when the city of Memphis or whomever calls one call gets the process started and it's not this continued you know 10 15 emails later somebody finally goes out and gets it done so Absolutely. thank you madam chairman thank you uh, any other members have questions um, um, one and and then I think Sen I'll, we we talked about what's the best project you ever worked on what is the, ch the biggest challenge you have in your specific region and then in a third part is how has the department changed in your years working there Absolutely. Thank you. Jason Baker, Region 4 Director. Um, I will say m my best job or my favorite job is also my worst job, uh, which was the when the crack was discovered in the I-40 bridge. Um, definitely a, a, a not a good situation, major impact, uh, not just to Tennessee, but to the country. But to be able to be part of a group that worked with two different states, multiple agencies, City of Memphis, City of West Memphis, to open it back up in 83 days. Um, definitely a shining moment, uh, in my opinion, for TDOT, probably my favorite project. Right, you all did a great job. I actually got to come down and visit it. Right. They told me that I could go down on the scaffolding, but I had to have a life jacket on so they could recover the body if I fell in. Um, I said, no, nah, I'll just look from up here. But it really was fascinating, and the coordination between TDOT with Arkansas, with uh, the trucking industry, um, you know, the, the coordination to keep the traffic flowing while that major bridge was shut down. I mean, everybody worked really hard on that, and, and I, I appreciate it. So, so that was your favorite and your biggest challenge, I guess it was, or what's the current challenge? Um, we've actually hit on it a little bit you know the the geology of West Tennessee when it comes to the pavements uh, that's a challenge that that we're c constantly trying to work on and, and work through uh, with the with the soil types that we've got uh, the longevity of our asphalt pavements don't last quite as long as they do in other areas um, one good thing is that we're working closely with headquarters, asset management, materials, different divisions, looking at ways and opportunities that we can improve that, making strides to using different types of techniques, treatment types, uh, hot recycling place, uh, full depth reclamation, all these different things. So challenge wise, it's something that we have to stay on top of, but it's, I'm also excited of, of where we're headed with that. And lastly, how, you, how have you seen the department change and your operations changed since you've been there? Overall, uh, in a word, I would say communication. The, the way we're functioning now is unlike we've done in the past, where it's been a lot more individuals working on different aspects. The collaborative approach that we're seeing now in the way we operate, 
uh, is, to be quite honest, exciting uh, to see where we are and where we're headed with that. So that's probably the, the largest change I've noticed. Good deal. I always think that even when you've got great operations, there's always room for improvement, and we all, all always need to be looking toward that. Uh, okay, Region 3. Hi there, Chair Lady. Jay Norris, Region 3. So a uh, project that I've enjoyed seeing the most in, in the last 15 months is our, broad, our Broadway Bridge replacement. It, um, it really showcased um, innovative thinking and the ability to close, uh, close that road for around nine weeks and replace that structure in a very short amount of time. Um, our, our team did an incredible job working with the local partners down there in the city of Nashville to make that project happen. That was very, very exciting. Challenge? So um, I would boil it down to this, is that we, the things that on our horizon that we need to be focused thinking on is asset management, congestion management, access management and safety. So asset management, you know, you look at our, our interstate system, it's hit the 60 year old mark. It's about ready for Medicare if it's a, if it's a person. And we're, we're, we're coming on a lot of very large bridge replacements that are, um, if we look at how much money we have set up to replace in our bridge program, we have several what we call budget busting bridges that are on the horizon. That's a challenge. Uh, congestion management, I know that um, a, a lot of y'all have seen the growth that has taken place in Tennessee. Um, we've got to we've got to come up with smart ways to manage that growth and partner with our cities, which really leads into access management. Um, we have a lot of cities and counties that are growing, and we need to have smart planning when it comes to um, these these businesses and communities accessing our system. Um, last thing I'll briefly mention is safety is with. With COVID, with the advent of COVID, people are driving a notch faster than they used to drive. And this is a kinetic energy problem. It's our fatality and serious, and serious injury crashes have gone up. And that's something we need to be keeping an eye on as well. So you think we need to be, we, we need to be focusing more proactive instead of reactive Absolutely. on all of those. And uh, lastly, in your 23 years, uh, how you've seen changes in, in, in the department? So um, I'll briefly answer this, is that when, when I started, it seemed like everybody that was right above me had 35 or 40 years, and so we've just gotten a lot younger in our staff. I mean, we have, we have a lot of staff members that have, are having babies now. You know, they're just in their early 30s, late 20s, and we're younger than we've been in my career. Um, and that's exciting. That's, that's that's a good thing. And I want to echo what Jason said: is that with um, we we've been going through an internal reorganization we call Epic, and redoing our program delivery. And we have been very focused on the team approach to delivering projects. And we're starting to see the fruit of that. That's good deal. Very exciting. Good deal. Okay, Region Two. Danny Oliver, Region Two Director. It yeah, I think I need to pull it up closer to me. As far as favorite projects, this is really tough for me. Um, I, I've, I've always, in, I, all projects are different. And to see impact, you know, and, and that, that problem solved was, is so rewarding. So some of my most favorite are the shortest ones, maybe a safety project, a turn lane, a site distance fix, or just brightening things up um, is, uh, is, is very exciting to me to see a community say, hey, I needed that, that's helped my kids, they've been out there. You know, I don't worry about them as much now because there's awareness. Um, as far as large-scale projects, we have a little interchange in Chattanooga that's being worked on right now. It's uh, I-75 and 24, yeah, yeah, it's, and it's a design-build project. So um, we're designing in large as we go on, on a large part of it, and just seeing the collaboration, streamlining things come together is, is very um, exciting and rewarding as well. And in your 17 years, how, how have you seen the department change? I've seen the department change, you know, a lot like uh, Jason and, and uh, Jay have said. Um, I, I realized just sh a few months ago that I'm the oldest engineer in my direct report structure. And I was at one time the youngest engineer and the youngest director. Um, and besides that, you know, besides that moment when that happens, the speed of information and the turnaround of information is, has really changed things. I, I think a lot of, we used to write letters and mail letters and respond with letters and now it's it's all immediate so that's that's a, that's a change thank you uh, region one 
Steve Borden, Region 1, and this is really tough about the favorite project. It's like trying to choose between your children which one you love the most. My daughter and son, I love them both. They're really different, but you love them. And, 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 and I say that in all, all sincerity. These, these projects become our children. A lot of us that, that, that work here for a long time, you, you see them when they're born, right? You sit on the hood of a car, a car in a community, and they say, we need something done. And to be able to be a part of the process to develop it, and you, you finally get them going to college, right? You get them construction. You hope they don't take too long or cost too much money, right? Uh, uh, which is the truth. But, uh, and so it, it is tough. And so I'll run through a couple of things that are milestones for me. So my very first project that was my own in construction, you know, I worked with other people training, was Amherst Bridge, which a lot of you will never know where that's at. You'll know. And Jack's Grocery down there had great bologna sandwiches at the end of the bridge. I ate there every day for about a year and a half. But it was my first project, right? I was the guy that was in charge. Uh, over the years, there have been a lot of great projects. Smart Fix, which was the largest contract in the history of the state of Tennessee, but very innovative, very collaborative. Uh, I can remember before we shut the interstate down, which is a 14-month closure, which was the longest anywhere in the United States. And we did a lot of planning ahead of time, a lot of improvements on the corridors around it because Knoxville doesn't have a lot of bypasses or anything. And I can remember sitting on the side of the road with Howler and Hilton Hill because they called it in the paper. It was going to be Carmageddon, right? We're going to shut the interstate down, everybody. And he, said, he finally looked at me and said, well, it's really not bad out here at rush hour with, after you shut it down for the planning. But the collaboration of delivering that project in an accelerated manner, sitting with a team of people. I love teams, right? I coach as well. Uh, in middle school and uh, high school, uh, basketball and, and being a part of a team is always great and us sitting in a room and, and developing solutions on the fly. We had a clock on the wall the whole years, four years of that job. Uh, there were two contracts but that whole time. And it was a countdown to each milestone. And as we're making decisions, we know we have to go quickly to be able to make sure that we meet those, those parameters. I think of other things, and, 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 and uh, Jason mentioned the, uh, the bridge down there, which I got to climb around. I did put the vest on and go down at the bottom. Um, but, you know, when we're ever faced with something like that, to watch our teams respond. Uh, I-75 is an important corridor for us, and to get up there one night and, and see that the whole mountain is sliding and we're losing I-75 and watch a people people working, our, our, our men and women in crews building crossovers, moving the traffic over, geotechnical staff redesigning, project development, environment, everybody working together to get a set of plans out the door and a contractor on board in four days to do $20 million worth of work and restore that. And, you know, those are the times when you don't want disasters, but to be able to work along your team that you've trained alongside of, worked alongside of, and, and seen that. And, and I'll hit on something that Danny said as well. And, and, and so... We often think of projects as and the term honking big projects, these big legislative multi-million dollars. But I tell you, in, in my time here, some of the most rewarding things are when I'm able to go into a community, and it can be as simple as we're going to get a turn lane for a school, right? They, they, you, go, you come and meet. You know, a lot of times you guys call us and say, hey, I've got this constituent or the school board or a mayor. Can you, can, can you come look at it? And to be able to look in a short time that we've made a difference, right? Um, you know, I think that's, you know, so that's some of my favorite projects, so. When you were doing the smart way, because it was right by where my office was, and trying to tell people how to get to my office while it was closed, <laughs> and, and I, every, you know, every week or so, it would be kind of like going through a war zone to figuring out which way to get <laughs> there, and, and uh, but it, it was quick, and once it got open, it was really easy to tell people how to get there. Um, you Just saying, you, you still, um, um, biggest challenge, real quick, and then, uh, and then, the, and then in your, your 33 years, how the department's changed, and then Senator Powers has a question. Okay. Um, biggest challenges, I think, for a lot of us, I mean, Jay hit on a lot of those really well with the, the, with the safety, congestion, mitigation. I mean, y'all know that we live in an incredible state. Uh, Y'all have done a great job as leadership to steward our state and make it the place where people want to be. Uh, the other side of that, people want to be here. And, uh, you know, as I, as, I, as I walk through my communities and meet with the people that I serve alongside, uh, you know, it, it's scalable. We know growth in Nashville's big. But growth in Jonesboro's big. Uh, even in Mountain City, when I went with, met with the mayor last year, it's a small town, Upper East Tennessee, maybe you don't know, all the way at the very end. 
but it's scalable. The stress of for schools, utilities, and providing transportation in those communities is real uh, with the people who want to be here. And I think that's one of our biggest challenges is how to meet that need and be creative. Uh, we're big on what we call TISMO when trying to, and that's just making operational management improvements of your system to make it safer and and more efficient with small dollars, right? Uh, being creative. And so I, I think that's one of our largest challenges that we have to be able to meet those safety needs, the congestion needs as we move forward with the changing climate of, of how much people want to be here. Wow, the changes in the department, I, like Danny, I realize I'm the old guy now. Uh, that happened really quick. Uh, you know, it, it is true. So you could go in a, a county office or a, uh, a district office 15 years ago and say, and ask the question. I can remember a governor saying, how many people have more than 25 years? And two-thirds of the people raised their hand. If you go there now, it's going to be me and one other person raised their hand. Uh, so that's a, that's a big, big change. The other thing is technology and the speed of information. Uh, I came here, and we were, I was doing survey work, and... Uh, you know, we used a lot of the old survey techniques, and I'm pulling a chain. A chain was a uh, metal tape and everything. Danny knows what it is. He used to teach genetics. And to now the technology with the drones and what all we're able to, one, get a much higher level of accuracy and, and something and do it really quick and safer for our people, uh, that's been a big change too. Very good. I'm not sure if we passed a bill for you to use drones, though, but no. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. Senator Powers. Well, you, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, lady. And uh, as a two-term summer employee of the Clarksville City Street Department, um, I feel like I should speak to my favorite project. And um, <laughs> my, my favorite project actually um, was filling potholes with cold mix. Now, just recently, I had a... a I was listening to something, and it seems as though you still fill potholes with cold mix. Still done the same way. Uh, I, I found that fascinating as you're still doing it the same way that, that I did it. But uh, I can tell you that as a car dealer, I appreciate a good pothole. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, can fill a, it, it can fill up a service department with uh, alignments and tires and the very, but uh, as a member and a legislator on the transportation committee, I've kind of lost some of my affinity there. But uh, I do want y'all to know that I appreciate what you do. I used to throw down hot mix at 475 degrees with a shovel and walk on it. So I've been through, you know, it was a long time ago. And, and certainly the, the techniques, you talk about the the escalation of all the technology it uh it's certainly not what we used to do but uh i just want you to know i appreciate every one of you for what you do uh the potholes are are a problem you know i'm not telling y'all anything and i think y'all are addressing them I, I see them going away little by little every day as i buy, drive back and forth to clarksville but uh appreciate every one of you and appreciate you being here with us today thank you and Senator Powers, we do have the 1-800 number, number to report potholes so they know where they are. But when you've got zero, I, I'm not an engineer, but I do know enough that when you have zero degrees weather and then the next week you have 70 degrees, 60 degrees weather, that, that makes potholes, that grows potholes. So I know everybody's working as hard as they can. Uh, any other questions from the members? Uh, I just want to thank you for being here. I know it was, um, uh, you, f you filled in, you filled in amply. When you talked about your biggest challenge, I, I admire that you, none of you said dollars. Um, you know, obviously we're going to continue to work to get more dollars so we can do more projects because we know that is, um, that we, we're, trying to expand our road system across the state as fast as we can and, and by being more efficient and utilizing our dollars a lot more um, that uh, we can do more with less basically and I think that's important and I, 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 I guess I've been interrupted on my clothes and Senator Nicely has a question or a comment. Thank you Madam Chairman. I'm just going to make a comment give you a little history lesson since I'm the historian for the Senate. Uh, the first guy to ever get paid by the state to improve a road was a man by the name of Adam Peck. 
he was an early, early settler up in Jefferson County and is in the early 1800s, and they hired him to improve road. I don't know what road it was. can't remember that. Uh, but uh, he was the first man that the state paid money to up in Jefferson County. And uh, probably some Indian trail he was improving a little bit. But that's your little bit of history today, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Senator Nicely. That's, he always does a great job with that. But thank you for filling in. I think giving the more personal aspect of the individual projects. Um, Jay, thank you for setting this up, and Commissioner and, and Will for being a part of this. And with that, we'll go back in sessions. Um, any remarks or any com other comments from members? Uh, Senator Bowling. Thank you, just very briefly, just so you know that Frank was not there when they hired the man, <laughs> but he did date his great, great, great granddaughter. So <laughs> with that, will I take a motion to adjourn? We are adjourned. Thank you.